Hello, welcome pen friends. This is the second video in a series of 10 uh, from the Jacques Arbonne series. It is their premium fountain pen ink collection, standard full line. And I was sent the samples from Goulet Pen Company. Um, they were sent to me free. So we're doing this. Um, I just, I just love this. We're doing the brown today. And the actual translation that I got for this word here, it's, um, impossible for me to say. I listened and listened to the Google lady, but it's earth of shadow. So it's just a nice warm brown and let's get right into it. <clears throat> I can't wait to show you because uh, it's really been something. So let's go in. This is the Bond Travel Gear 68 GSM Tamoy River paper. And here we go. Okay, here it is in the broad nib. <clears throat> And it took about 35 seconds to dry with that pen. Whoops, I think a fly just flew by, my goodness. <clears throat> we are having such a beautiful day that if I sound distracted, that's what it is. I've got all the windows open. It's gorgeous. It's not going to last, but it's our first cool front. We've been just sweltering down here in Texas, so it's very welcome. Okay, and then in the stub nib, it took about 25 seconds to dry. I started to see a little more shading. But I still want to look over some other samples to point because I got some shading in the uh, broad nib too on different paper. And we'll look at that. Let's see. The fine nib, it took 30 seconds to dry. And there were places where I could really see quite a bit of shading coming through. My first impressions, it's just a really nice color. The flow is just as good as the last uh, one that we did. Let's see, we'll flip back real quick. We did, um, whoops, no, it was further back. We did the gray one and I was raving about the flow. Well, it, it was the same deal with this one. And it, it also has the partial water resistance. So let's look at chromatography and then I'll show you the water test. So you can see there's a lot of orange there and also you can see what's going to happen because, oh my, big truck from somewhere. There's a solid line that just kind of stays behind that's that dark gray color. And then it moves on up. But there's a lot of orange there. In fact, I want to flip back really quick to show you the last brown that we just did and show you the chromatography on Lee Detay. Because at first glance, you know, they look pretty similar and they, they're going to look a little similar on the panel too. But you see how that's a little different? It still had that same property of staying um, partially resistant to the water and then moving up to orange. But there's just a lot more orange in this one. In, uh, I'm going to call it Earth of Shadow because I really cannot pronounce the other. So um, let's grab the water test. <clears throat> Here it is. So uh, it did that same thing that the Lee de Tay by J. 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 Arbon did. Um, this is not, I have not cleaned this out of the pens yet. That's weird. I must have thought I was writing on this one. <laughs> oh, okay, so just disregard this. I'm sure it's going to turn out okay, but the A was supposed to be written here on the gray ink, uh, and that was your little after action report but let me go ahead and do it because I'll forget yeah it did get an A huh yeah I grabbed the wrong one that is embarrassing okay anyway so we see that it has some water resistance and it certainly isn't brown anymore on here so <laughs> there we go I'm gonna have to fix that if there's any changes so let's go on to our other samples I have quite a few to show you first will be Rhodia 80 GSM dot grid paper. Made a mess on it. Oh dear. Okay. And here we have it in the broad nib. <clears throat> 30 seconds or so to dry. And then see how it kind of warms up a little in the um, stub nib? I like that feature actually. I really like that. That that's that started to be right about where I really liked it. Okay, and then in the fine nib, 25 seconds to dry. I, I've been kind of puzzled over that, but it's been taking a while in, in that fine nib, the Lamy fine nib, to dry. So, no, very good in all three nibs. Yeah, as you can see, you got no readability issues. Uh, I found that the flow was excellent on the Rhodia, too, and that was really nice. 
Now, when we get done, I hope I can remember to flip back again to Lee to Tay because there's some very obvious differences and I thought maybe that would help. Um, you know, because some of you are already familiar with Lee to Tay. Okay, so I decided to throw in the Claire Fontaine, even though this is a small notebook and it, but it's on white and it helps us to see. Um, and and I did, it did catch quite a bit more shading on here. And I, I like that. And it made me realize that it, it had more shading than I thought at first. So it goes all the way across in the broad nib, about 25 seconds to dry. It looked like it needed a little bit more. And then in the uh, stub nib, I was seeing the fantastic shading off and on. Yeah, I really, and you can even see it in, in here a little bit in the, the scribbles. 20 seconds to dry in that stub. And then where I wrote my name, I was seeing all kinds of, uh, of shading. Now, I think when I print, that's when shading comes out in my writing. But I'm a very fast writer when I do cursive. So that may be something that's skewing my results a little bit. Okay, here's the fine nib. Uh, but but I always, my purpose in these videos is so that you'll know whether you want to buy a sample of the ink. I, I certainly can't, no, no matter what, can't show you enough that to where you'd know you needed a bottle because so, you've got to try it for yourself. But uh, if you're interested, I mean, that, that sounded ridiculous. Okay, fine nib, um, a little bit more than 25 seconds to dry in that one too. And I, I just found that was a real pleasant experience on Claire Fontaine. So we had another one. Now I still stayed, uh, still did some tests on CBS Caliber notebook, inexpensive notebook that tends to. This will always show me <laughs> uh, a lot if the ink is a little dry, and because the papers, the papers can be dry and it can interact with the inks, but the inks that stand up to this paper and still flow really well and show up wow yeah you know you're doing well when you can do that on here so broad nib 35 seconds to dry and stub nib again it it lightens quite a bit in that stub nib which just makes it look pretty i think <clears throat> uh 25 seconds to dry so that was equivalent to the the tamoy river 68 okay and then down in the fine nib, we had 25 seconds to dry and a note that CVS Caliber is a great paper ink match for this. Okay, I guess we could start looking on the backs of them. Nothing but regular ghosting on the back of here. Okay, and then, um, well, Claire Fontaine, you can be sure you're not going to get much ghosting. You can see, you know, some, but it's very normal, I think. Okay, and then in Rhodia, whoops, we've got to look back on our gray ink. Let me turn it around. Very little ghosting there. Okay, and let's flip over our Tamoy River paper here. Okay, so, you know, you can see it, and it's just normal, but I don't think it interferes, really. <clears throat> so, let's look at something else I have here. Let's look at the... Uh, this is 52 GSM Tamoy River paper, and it's just an ink splatter. And then there I wrote with the uh, stub nib. So I thought that was neat. Let's see how that compares, if it, if it d can be compared. It looks very similar, and it, it just came out real good. Of course, it's going to seep through when you, you know, splat it on the paper like that. But I wanted to show you how it compared to Lee de Tay. So Lee de Tay is just much more of a vintage kind of, a, dare I say, dusty look. It's different, uh, and but we're comparing it apples to apples. This is the same paper. So you, you can see that there's just a little difference in um, the tone and everything. It is very different, really, when you really look at it. So let's go back to that page. And too bad I can't show them side by side. It wouldn't really be fair to go back into Rhodia, would it? But I guess we could do it just as a general comparison. But, um, oops, I'll be to Tay, where are you hiding? Oh, there you are. Okay. Well, because it does brighten on the white, on the pure white um, Rhodia anyway, but uh, so that you can see, uh, you know, how that compares. 
I think what I might have been thinking of doing, <laughs> if it weren't for this weather, is showing you these two, the Today's and Lidete. <clears throat> but it's not a fair comparison totally because of the fact that we're looking at Rodia on the left and the Tomoe River on the right. So that's just one of those limitations. It's like at the doctor's office where he says, which do you like better, A or B, you know? And you have to see it several times, right? I do. I have to say, please show me again because I couldn't tell a difference, you know? And then maybe two or three different times and I'll see a difference. But hopefully that's a little bit helpful and I need to stop and uh, move along here. <laughs> oh. Okay, so let's look at the comparisons. We've got quite a few. Quite a few. Brown is such an interesting color and it's so nice for this time of year. At least in the United States, we're in the fall season and a lot of people are really experiencing it experiencing that we're very slow in south texas to get our trees to change or our leaves to fall off or anything but back in my home state they are so right in the middle is our ink which is earth of shadow <laughs> and it's just a nice color but right beside it i did put a J. Bon lee de tay because it is lighter and you and it and that comes through here you can actually see that here on on the cameras and everything and then a new ink that I'm trying out is a Diamine Ochre, which it's really warm. It's, it's almost as warm and, and orangey as um, SBRE Brown. And when I say almost, it's looking every bit as much here on the camera. But the camera and lighting do kind of brighten things a little. So we have to keep that in mind always. Get a sample. That would be the thing. Um, up here I put Tasha Golden Wheat. I remember that being so pretty. Now, the, one of the things I was going to point out, but you're probably seeing it, you can see that water resistance that it does have, which is not complete, but some, in both of them side by side. You see how the little paintbrush dabs didn't go away, and they didn't appear on Pelican Edelstein Smoky Quartz either. But that is, to me, a much darker ink when it comes out of the nib. And then we've got a kind of a reddish brown with Monteverde Scotch Brown. Um, and then Birmingham John Arbuckle Coffee Bean. That's interesting, but it's a whole different tone. And so is the Tasha Tea. That is just way different. So we've got a combination here, and then I've got some more. Let's see. <laughs> because you may be familiar with some of these. Here's KWZ Cappuccino. That's a very nice ink. Uh, it does have a little, like a couple shades different. It, it is different, but it's very pretty and it has much less resistance to the water, it seems. Okay, Krishna Dark Chocolate is, is much darker and coming out of a nib, it just, it really does come out very dark. <clears throat> okay, Caveco Caramel Brown. <clears throat> I don't have a lot of experience with this ink, but I can see that it appears darker. And I thought that maybe you would be familiar with it or something. So I pulled that one out. Whoops. And then I have also profiled this one, Monteverde Moonstone. It's rather complex and darker brown. Definitely not as warm. And you're not going to find that orange in there. Not to that level anyway. So that's it for the comparisons. Wow. Um, there are many, many more, I'm sure. And you probably are aware of. So what did I think of the ink? I think you can already tell. <clears throat> I really like the, the sink, and it's just amazing because uh, I got my cola ring out that has all my full bottles. Must have laid it down somewhere. Just a minute. I should always say just a second because, of course, pause is a wonderful thing. <laughs> okay, so as far as what I thought of the ink, I think it's a very nice ink. The flow and the little bit of water resistance really does count. Today I was writing a pen pal letter and I, got, I had like a drink off to the side which was kind of sweating because it had glass. And then I'd removed the drink and somehow just a little tiny bit of water got on my underneath paper. And anyway, I had to apologize to my pen friend because it... It kind of smeared and messed up my letter. Um, you know, and then having to go back in and fill in the letters is harder than it, at least it, if it shows a little. That's nice. So I thought saturation was great. It's way up there around 8. The flow was excellent, you know, in my way of being. And it's interesting because I heard someone say, 
that Lidite was a notoriously dry ink and I wasn't having that experience so I got to figure out whether it's my pens or or what hmm anyway that's that's something that to keep in mind always get a sample because this is just my experience shading I thought was maybe a little below average but it's there and it would be there in some of your nibs more I'm sure okay bleeding and feathering I didn't have any of that dry time I thought was really good average Okay, Sheen Halo Shimmer. I didn't see any of that stuff. And overall, I gave it an 8. I really like it. I'm not in the market for brown be uh, ink because uh, I have a little bottle of Pen Friend scent of Diamine Ochre, which is very warm and nice. Then I have a kind of a rusty red brown. Well, I call it a brown. Some people might call it even red. Monte Verde, Verde Canyon Rust, and I'm still finishing up my uh, big bottle of SBRE Brown. Uh, so that, <clears throat> that is good because I'm such an inkaholic. Oh, you heard it here, but you already knew it. Okay, so what we, I think we'll try next is to use this ink in a, a little bit of an artistic manner, if we can, with the Nick Stewart technique. And first I want to show you, we're going to kind of do something like this. When we did J. Arbonne Lee de, Lee de Tay, I had Diamine Soft Mint and I just loved that combination. So we're just going to replicate that sort of, not, not try to make it the same, no, but we're going to see what happens when we use uh, today's ink, the, um, <clears throat> the Earth of Shadow, <laughs> and then we come back in with the little soft mint, because I just thought that was a really neat color combination. Okay, we've got a couple of pens, bunches of, okay, I gotta have that one first, some paint brushes. There, okay. It's gonna actually end up like 87, so we're gonna be with the windows closed pretty soon and the air conditioner on, but this is the first time in months and months I've been able to have my windows open, so, I'm sorry, it's kind of like you're right here with me, hearing all the trucks and stuff. But uh, I can't stand it to have the windows closed right now. I love the outside, too. Ooh, nice. Okay. I gotta remember, talking and, and working on this doesn't always work for me too good. <laughs> okay. Got to see... Okay, so I've got my broad nib. I think I'll go in and try to do a... Now, I'm not trying to do what I did before exactly, of course. It's all serendipity, but I will be very curious as to how it compares to, to the last one. Okay, there we go. Hoo-hoo, neat. I'm liking what it's doing so far. Okay, let's do the bottom part, and then we can go in with the other color. Yeah, I guess. I guess I do it different every time. Whoops! <laughs> we got roots growing down the bottom there. What do I want to do? Okay. I think I still have a little bit of ink there. <clears throat> yep, I do. Okay. Oh, that's neat. Look at the orange coming out. That's what I wondered it, whether it would happen. I, oh, goodness, that's neat. <laughs> I really did wonder. Okay, obviously I'm feeling extremely rusty. I don't know why. Okay, so let's come in with this Diamine Soft Mint and a little... Hmm, that's not the detail brush. Let's get the detail brush. <laughs> well, we'll do both. Just probably better get a move on while I still have some way of the top part. Uh, you know, enough water up here. Ooh, boy. That ink by itself is really good for this technique. <clears throat> because the it, as the chromatography showed us it's got a lot going on and you can see it right here huh okay what was i actually thinking there ah. <laughs> okay we have something blue in the corner Add a little here and see what happens. We've already got brown, so we, we get another tone of brown, maybe. Huh. Okay, time for detail pen there. <laughs> now that I've made a complete mess. 
Okay, let's get the Lamy Fine Nib out. Yeah, I was going to say, what color do I have in here? Brown. It's brown. Nice. Okay, it started to dry a little over here, but you can get a lot of detail. And the detail stays longer if the paper's a little drier, so that's always good. Oh, I like this. <laughs> uh, Manuel had to uh, trim the palm trees today. He came in all cut up. I had to do first aid. I was like, what happened? <laughs> oh my gosh, it looked like he'd been to war. <clears throat> okay, let's see here. Let's see. Oh, well, maybe that's a little flock of birds. Why would I want to ruin it? Okay, I might be just getting a little bit ridiculous here. I don't like to try to manufacture a picture. I like it to come out however it's going to come out. So I think you can probably see what I'm seeing. This ink, today's ink, the Jacques Arbon um, Earth of Shadow, is very suited to this technique, and you could you could end up really enjoying the art that you could do with this I think because the, the any water at all that you would use it just reacts to it so pretty okay uh oh this is the hard part oh my goodness this is a part I almost thought we'd have a vote on which one was next but I think what I'll just do is sort of just pick the next ink because that needs to happen um, it'll be hard to clean this out of these pans and that's one of the things I was going to mention to you I can tell when I love the inks when I just drag my feet and don't want to clean the pens. I want to keep writing with them, you know, and of course I've, I'm now using three and they're all linked up and they, they were so generous to send me four mils of each ink. Um, but I don't want to clean the pens out, but okay, so what do we want to go to next? We have done the gray and the brown. All right, I'm going to get really brave. Let's do the black. I don't think I've ever reviewed a black ink. It's come pretty close with some of the ones that were so dark. But let's try that. Um, it's going to take me a, a little longer because I don't have the little panel things for all of my black inks. But that'll be a very fun project. So this will be next, Nor Abysmal. We are in October. It is going to be Halloween. <clears throat> People are writing. And we just did an orange, so... We could do that one, and we will. But let's do the black one next. Thank you so, so much for joining me and uh, for all of your support. We are almost at 2,000 pen friends, and it just uh, blows my mind. Um, let me know what you thought of today's. I think it's a great ink. I wish I could, you know, get it to come across as its true, true self. We're almost there. You could see it pretty well, but we do uh, have to keep in mind the cameras and the lighting. So I'd love to hear what you thought of this ink, and I'll see you with the next one. We'll be doing a black ink. Bye for now.